So these are the rats that you can tickle and they laugh. Yes, these are, uh, you know, very friendly domestic rats. We would not want to tickle a sewer rat or a wild rat, but these are, even though I haven't handled this one at all, you know, it's pretty friendly and uh, not much to worry about, especially if they're female. So how you tickle them? How you make them laugh? Well, you know, you have to get friendly with them and you turn them down and it looks like they like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. If we had the ultrasonic equipment, you would hear So this is our way of evaluating where they are in emotional space. Kas teate, et ka rotid armastavad naeru kihistada? Mina ei teadnud ja ei teadnud maailmas eriti keegi, kuni asja hakkas uurima Eesti soos psühholoog ja neuroteadlane Jaak Pankse. USA selav ja töötav professor Pankse on üks kuulsamaid eestlastes psühholoogi ja neuroteadlasi maailmas. Rotide emotsioonide avastamine on ta üks tuntumaid panuseid teadusesse, Ent enne kui hakkame otsima vastust, mis muudab nii rotte kui ka inimesi õnnelikeks, ajame oma elutöö inglise keeles teinud mehega pisut ema keeles juttu. Professor Pankseb, võibolla räägime natuke nüüd eesti keeles ka. Okei, okay, räägime eesti keeles, jah. Räägige, kuidas te üldse siia Ameerikasse tulite, kuidas, millal te Eestist ära läksite ja kuidas? Uh, perekond oli uh, Saksamaal umbes viis aastat. Ma olin üks aasta vana, kui Eestist lägime, pagenesime ja lä läksime Poolasse. Siis oleme Põhja Saksamaal viis aastat, kui nad pommitasid Hamburgis. Ma olen Hamburgis pommitamise ajal. Toda ma ei mäleta, aga küll ma mäletan, kui ma olin kolm aastat vana. Tuo oli saja lõpul ja ma mäletan, mängisin sada tankidega, ja, you know, mis oli jä jäetud sinna. Ja siis, kui olin kuus aastat vana, siis Oldenburgist Bremenhaveni ja Bremenhavenist New Yorki. Ja, Laeb võttis, laeb võttis, mis kümme päeva ja oli stormiline ja paljud olid aiged. Ja kui New Yorki saime, siis igal immigrantil pidi olema juba töökoht. Ja kui Sopru või you know, Onusi või Ante ei olnud seal, siis Keegi leiab sulle üheks aastaks tööd ja isal ja emal oli töö Delawares, üks väike, väike linn Bethel. Oma eesti keele oskuse kohta ütleb Pankseb, et see on tal olemas ainu üksi tänu suhtlemisele vanematega. Eestlaste keskustest elast alati eemal, oma töös ja pereelus ei ole tal ema keelt kunagi vaja olnud. Ja muidugi mulle tuli inglis keel selgemaks, you know, kui eesti keel varsti eesti koolis kunagi ei käinud. Ja, you know, küll vanemad õpetasid eesti keelt lugema, aga peaaegu kõik minu lugemine tuli inglis keeles. Ja läksin läbi no, alkooli ja keskkooli ja gimnaasiumi Lakewoodis. Ja siis tahtsin arkitekt olla ja läksin Pittsburghi, kus peaaegu hakkasin arkitektu õppimist, aga ei uuvitanud ja siis läksin electrical engineering. Ma olin University of Pittsburghis ja suur linn ja, ja tole pealt olin enda peal elamine. Lõpetasin, ma olin õnnelik selle jaoks, et mu Gimnaasiumi graadid olid nii head, et ma ei pean maksma ülikooli eest. Of course, pead maksma elu eest ja sööki eest ja siis ma alati töötasin natuke. Ja viimased kaks aastat ma töötasin kulumajas, 
kus olin night orderly, ohtu tulet sisse ja abitaad inimesed magama minna ja mõni kord pidid ka panema restraintidele. Ja nii no, mul tuli väga suur ruudi, mis juhtub ja inimese ajuga, kui nad saavad psychiatric disorderid ja tahtsin... Psyhiaatrilised aigused siis? Jah. Edasised õppingud Massachusetts ülikoolis olid juba kliinilise psühholoogi alal ja siis esimene töökoht USA sõjaveteranide administratsiooni haiglas, kus selgus, et kõige enam huvitab panksepa ikkagi aju. But your work in science has been in English, so I think we can continue in English. Oh, yes, oh now, my... Now we know that you can speak <laughs> Estonian well. <laughs> Kohtume professoriga Ohio osariigis Bowling Greeni ülikoolis, kus ta aastakümneid töötas ja mille psühholoogia teaduskonna maailmas väga tuntuks muutis. Just siin tegi ta ka oma kuulsad avastused rottida kohta ning, nagu teaduses sageli, üsna juhuslikult. Well, uh, we had been studying social processes in the brain. Uh, spent a lot of time on, you know, the anxiety one feels when one's young and left alone, separation, distress. And then we wanted to study, you know, what makes uh, animals feel good. And of course, that's play. And play is built into the brain. Uh, and we studied play for a long time, 20 years. Congrats. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, we started measuring the vocalizations in the middle 19, late 1990s. And, uh, you know, we discovered that there was a play vocalization, so you can't hear it with your own ears. You have to have special equipment. And we studied the play vocalization for many years. And then one morning I thought, maybe it's like laughter. And I came to the laboratory here, and uh, one of my students, Jeff Bergdorf, was waiting for me. And I said, Jeff, let's go tickle some rats. And I just tickled a little rat the way I would tickle a little child. I know how to tickle a child. Mm -hmm. And when you tickle a child, they want to be with you. And the first animal, young animal, I did it on the animal. <laughs> Second animal, third animal, every animal. You know, some were very, very loud and high. Others were not. It turns out the ones that are very loud and high are happier animals by every measure that we collected, the ones that don't show so much are more sad and more prone to depression. So we're getting at the emotional personality. Hakates lähemalt tuurima, mis rottide peas täpselt toimub, põrkusid Panksepp ja ta töögrupp arvamusega, et kuna loomade mõtteid on võimatu lugeda, saab vaid vaadelda nende käitumist ja selle põhjal järelusi teha, kuid Panksepp soovis tungida sügavamale. Aju kaardistati ning selgitati välja osad, mida stimuleerides muutuvad rotid õnnelikeks. That if you're trying to put an electrode into this area, which I'm very interested in, it's lateral hypothalamus. Uh, you go so far forward in the brain, so far lateral, and so deep in the brain, and you can put chemistries into the brain, you can sample brain chemistries, and you can also stimulate with electricity or chemical compounds. So, you know, it's very precise work. But the rat's brain must be tiny, tiny. Oh, no, yeah. the rat brain would be about that high. <laughs> the cat brain about that high. The dog brain about that high. <laughs> Human brain about that high. But they'll have similarities. They oh, yeah. The, the road map is very similar. You know, very similar. But, uh, and the chemistries. There's no chemistry in the human brain that doesn't already exist in a rat brain. You know, there might be small differences in amino acids for a neuropeptide. Uh, all the areas that we have in the brain, the rat has. So if we work out the functions of any of these areas in the rat, we have the principle for what it does for humans. 
Pankseb on veendunud, et enne kui asuda keerulisemaid organisme, näiteks inimest uurima, tuleb aru saada primitiivsematest, evolutsiooni algusest. But if you don't understand the foundations of experience, you will never understand the rest. Now this seems to be a novel argument, but uh, I think it's the correct one. It's an evolutionary argument, and our, we're very evolutionarily oriented. Many uh, brain scientists are not. And our feeling is that you have to understand the most earliest solutions very clearly before you understand the other solutions. So we'll see how it goes. Pankseb auringud rotidega tõepoolest kinnitasid, et samu impulse, mis tekivad nende näriliste ajus, näeb ka inimestel. Oleme ju kõik ühest imetajate soost. Meie inimesed oma arengus lihtsalt palju kaugemale jõudnud. Well, we're all mammals and we all share a common ancestor. You know, how many millions of years ago would the common ancestor be? Well, maybe 25-30 million. And, uh, you know, we were already very sophisticated creatures and the emotions are very primitive in the brain. So once you have a solution in the brain, all mammals will have a similar solution. In principle, they will not be identical, but, uh, you know, you never, the brain never throws away a mechanism that's very valuable for living. Professor usub, et üks peamisi soove nii meie kui ka rottide jaoks on tunda end õnnelikult. Ja ta ütleb, et oskab kasvatada õnnelike rotte. So you can breed happier rats? Of course, yes. So yes. What, what's the special secret there? Well, the secret is genetics, of course. Uh, you know, we would like to know the genes that control happiness because those are the genes that you want to promote in depression. And, uh, or at least the products of those genes. And that has, that is how we discovered this antidepressant that is now in human trials. You know, this elevated the happy laughter type sounds in animals. Uh, we worked out what genes are elevated by playing, you know, the happiest time animals have. And we found the genes that are elevated. And we simply took the first gene to ask, can that gene elevate happiness in rats? And it was insulin-like growth factor one, and it's a very powerful facilitator of positive affect. But that also increases tumor growth. So we went to the next gene, and it ended up being a part of the glycine receptor, and we developed medicines for that receptor that didn't exist before. So you know those happiness genes? We know some of them. <laughs> We certainly don't know all of them, but uh, we found enough to go to medicinal development. Oma elutööks peab professor Pankseb siiski mitte rotide naeru avastamist, vaid aju neurofunktsioonide täpse kaardi koostamist. Kokku on tema hinnangul kõigil imetajatel seitse liikuma panevat jõudu. This is the map. This is the conceptual map to understand the neuroscience map and neurochemical map. This is my big contribution. This is my life work. Seeking, looking for stuff, rage, competing for stuff, fear, protecting yourself, lust, so there's sexual reproduction, maternal care, taking, making sure the young can grow up nicely, Separation distress, the loneliness of being alone, the pain of being alone. We call that the panic system because we think panic attacks emerge from that. And finally, there's a play system. Professor Pankse Pascalal algab kõik otsingutest. Õnne, rahulduse, inimväärse elu, aga ka väärilised tasu otsingust. It is the biggest motivation to... Exactly, to be in the world with enthusiasm, looking for things, doing things that support your survival. So we think that the feeling of being an organism, you know, a primitive feeling of self actually comes from that system. And, you know, it is a system without a good name until you give it 
some important name. You know, the reward system, the brain has many reward systems. It's a shoddy word. Seeking, so, is, seeking is a clear, we're talking about a brain system. Teine liikumapanev jõud on Raev. Viha liigikaaslaste vastu, kes jahivad samu asju. Ja kolmas, hirm neist ilma jääda. We also capitalize rage, because rage exists because you compete for resources. And sometimes you have to fight for your resources, including your safety. So we have an anger type system in the brain. That Walter Hess map in cats, I mapped in rats. Then you have a fear system because some animals would like to have you as food many millions of years ago. And uh, so you have to have an automatic way to protect yourself. So this fear system has an anatomy, it has chemistries. Neljas põhisoov on vajadus palju neda järglasi saada, kuna see on ühelt poolt seotud seksiga ja teisalt õnnega järglaste üle nimetab pankseb seda lustiks. Olulist vahet teeb ta meeste ja naiste lusti soovi vahel. Just selle erinevuse pärast erinevad sood tema arvates sageli teine teist ei mõista. Well, the difference is uh, that the female part, I think, is more receptive, whereas the male part is more expressive. And uh, I think you can put the story together yourself. Now, the human condition and the animal condition is that we're born with both systems. So we're not born with a male system and a female system. The male system comes when you're still a fetus and your gonads secrete testosterone and the testosterone tells the brain to be male. And if that doesn't occur at the right time, the male brain remains female. So that's why we have homosexuality, because we are bipotential. We're both male and female in the beginning at a brain level, of course, genetically, your female XX chromosome or XY chromosome, and the Y chromosome controls testosterone secretion when you're still in the fetus. So that manufactures the male brain. So a lot of people don't understand that a male can be male on the outside, which is controlled by other genes, but be a female inside the brain. A female can be totally female on the outside, but maybe the mother was treated with steroids, and the brain can be masculinized. So a female-looking body can feel like a male. So this is why we have this uh, confusion that America is still having great problems with. Kuid jätkame professor Fangsepaga imetajate primaarsete protsesside kaardistamist. Viies on hool, hoolitsus. Once you have babies, you have to have a brain system to take care of the babies. We call that the care system. And the care system is much stronger in females than males. And it comes online, becomes very active due to the hormones of pregnancy. The hormones of pregnancy bring this system to completion. So the mother, several days before the baby is born, they, they might be scared, can I take care of my first baby? But after the hormones go in, they develop a courage. Uh, I can do it, a kind of different attitude. So the care system is also a system of confidence. That is what a mother needs, confidence to take care of this new baby with love, devotion, a special relationship. A child that doesn't have that relationship will always have psychological problems later. Kuues protsess, paanika, alles jäämise, ellu jäämise pärast. That's fine, yes. Then we have grief or panic because a baby has to have a system to indicate how much it needs the mother and parents. It cannot survive without others. If you are lost and you don't have a way of signaling that you're lost, then you will not survive. So, an animal and a human, a young human to survive, has to have a system that tells you how important others are, and we call this the panic system, 
and we measure it by young animals separated from mother for a short period and they begin to cry, the separation call. So this is a system that we put on the neuroscience map completely ourselves. There was no science of this system. And we spent, you know, 20 years of solid work on that system. We mapped the chemistries in the brain and we, uh, the anatomies in the brain. We know where it is. And now that we have modern brain imaging, people that have looked at human sadness find that those areas of the brain are active during sadness. So we think that this panic system is the source of grief, of sadness, which I have had plenty of in my life. You know, most immigrants have. You know, loneliness. You know, there's loneliness and you know, you lose everything. That is almost like losing your mother. So when my parents had to leave Estima, you know, they were in strong emotional states of grief and you know, what will happen, anger and mixed emotions. So this is the emotion that connects us to others, you know, uh, because others give us the good feeling of companionship. So this system is so important in psychiatry because the source of depression is the psychological pain of losing the ones you love. Pankseppa primaarsete protsesside rida lõpeb siiski optimistlikul noodil. Viimast seitsmendat neist nimetab ta vajaduseks mängida, ilma milleta keegi elus läbi ei saa. We've got one more system after that, which is the most wonderful of the systems. We call it the play system, because young mammals have so much to learn about others. And if you don't have a system to learn about others automatically, then you will not be a sophisticated social creature. To be a mammal is to be social. And uh, play takes young children to find other young children and they spontaneously start to do interesting things with each other. They run around, they chase each other, uh, you know, they pretend that one is the lion and the other is the sheep. Uh, and they hide, hide and seek. Uh, these are all the kinds of skills that you need at a fundamental level, but you also have to know what you can do to others and what others can do to you what you shouldn't do. So play tends to take children to the point of bad things happening. So we started the science and the neuroscience of play. Prior to that, there was no systematic procedures. And a lot of people were kind of like, play, that is trivial, you know? That's extra, that's not important. I think it is one of the most important emotional systems and the most recent system one of the most sophisticated systems, and uh, this is the system that we have been using to understand happiness. Nii et ka Pankseppa Aju Kaardlit on näha, et meie peamine eesmärk on ikkagi jõuda õnne tundeni, kui ta on uurinud ka vastupidist seisundit, depressiooni, mida on tema sõnul väga erinevat laadi. There are many kinds of depression. Right. And we don't know how to cut the pie the different kinds of depression. But the main thing is feeling lonely, feeling yes, hopeless. That's the source. If you're, if you're in psychological pain, and you know, this psychological pain that evolved from physical pain is when you don't have social support, you don't have love, you don't have that good feeling of friendship and solidarity. And you know, that has neurochemistries. Uh, and if those neurochemistries go too low towards psychological pain, then eventually you can't get out of that hole by yourself too easily. And uh, you can essentially use chemistries to support coming out of that hole, but Pills. it's a support. You know, it's not a cure. It is, uh, you know, something that has to go with things in the real world, as opposed to just the chemical world. Pankseb suhtub praegustesse, depressiooni ravimitesse selge eelarvamusega. Kui tema sõnul on silmapiiril siiski juba parem rohi, milleni jõudmises osales ka tema. Tegemist on esimese teaduslikult avastatud antidepressandiga. Kõik senised depressioonivastased rohud on leitud juhuslikult, 
Tarvitusele on need võetud hoopis teiste tõbede vastu, kuid korraga on avastatud ka nende mõju depressioonile. The antidepressants that we have right now, everyone was discovered by chance. It wasn't through human knowledge. A molecule had been developed for other reasons, and that other reason we saw that people were happier. So it was just used in depression, and all kinds of theories of depression were built upon the knowledge of how those molecules act in the brain, but they are not good medicines. They might be good medicines in the short term, but the problem with every antidepressant is that it might be good in the short term, but it builds up the background opposite process. So the thing that you were escaping from is getting stronger in your system. So when you take the medication away, you're worse than you were before. Töögrupp Chicago's Northwestern ülikoolis alustas teisest otsast. Uurima hakati seda, kuidas imetajate aju ise õnne tunnet tekitab. Uurimustöö käigus jõuti molekulini, mille nimi on Clix 13. The Clix 13 is a molecule that came from analyzing what play, happy play does to the cortex of the rat brain. So uh, We were captivated by this phenomenon. And we studied it many different ways, and the most recent has been the genetics of it, the neurochemistries that the genetics suggests. Rotti katsete lavastatu järel nähti, et samasugused protsessid samades aju osades toimuvad tegelikult ka inimestel. And uh, we have this molecule called Glix13 that came from the genetic analysis that went through animal toxicology, was very safe. It went through human toxicology. There was no bad effects in humans. And it has gone through the first FDA, Food and Drug Administration, stage two testing. And that testing finished uh, in September of 2012 this year. And it was much better than any antidepressant statistically. So what in the future, what can be the use of it? It can be used to treat depression. Thank you.